In this lecture, we're going to talk about the tools you're going to need when you're building your Qt UI applications. The first thing you're going to need is an IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It really is a piece of software that allows you to type your code and gives you the tools to run it and see it do things you want it to do. In our case, we're going to use Qt Creator as our IDE. It is the official Qt development IDE. And unless you have other reasons not to use it, I strongly recommend to write your Qt applications using Qt Creator because it makes it really easy. You won't have any headaches configuring it to do what you want to do, and you can directly focus on what it is you want to do. I have Qt Creator open on my Windows computer here. And you see, I have a project open. The first thing I want you to look at is on the left here. We have a list of files that make up our project. The first file we're going to look at is this PRO file. Let's open it. And what it really does is really to bundle together the different parts of your application to make it one single unit. Okay, if you look at it, there are a few things happening here. The line number seven here is really importing the libraries that are bundled into the Qt framework. We are importing the core part of Qt and the GUI library. On line 11, we define the name of our application. And this is the name that the users are going to see when they run our application. And the template here is uh, kind of defining what kind of project you are creating with Qt Creator. In this case, we are creating an application. And if we go down to line number 26, you see that we define a list of our source files that make up our project. And if you go here in the folder for sources, you see that we have the main CPP file and the widget CPP file. Okay, so they are defined in the PRO file. We also have a header file for our widget class. The other thing we have is this UI file here. And what it really defines is the visual aspect of our user interface that is called the widget in Qt terminology. So if we open this file, this widget.ui file, you're going to see that we see a user interface. And if we run our application, let's run it so that you see that this is what you're going to see when you run it. Let's run it. Let's look at the compile process by clicking on this compile output pane. And you see that our application is running. So let's bring this down so that you see it. And you see, this is really what we have. And this kind of proves that the widget.ui files define the looks of your application. Okay, by now you know that if you want to run your application, you click on this green button to see it running. And when you click on it, the compile process to build your application happens and you can see it by clicking on the compile output pane. Another thing you're going to need is to look at the application output in this case, we're really not seeing anything because this application is not writing anything to the logs, but we're going to have a chance to look at this as we go throughout the course. Now that you have a basic understanding of the UI and the look of Qt Creator, I'd like to draw your attention to something. Looking at the compiled output, I'd like you to look at the line here, okay, G++, and all the gibberish here. What is really happening is that Qt Creator is calling the compiler for you to kind of build your source code into something that can run on this particular computer here, a Windows machine. And the compiler is what is doing this heavy lifting of turning your source code into an executable that can run on this computer. Speaking of this, let's go to where this is being built so that I can show you that executable. So if you look in projects here, you see that we are specifying the build directory of our application to be this location here. So I want you to look at it, copy this entire path, 
go into so open my computer on whatever platform you are using and go there okay so in my case it is you know, on the d drive of my computer so i hit enter to go there i am building a debug flavor of my application so it makes sense to look in the debug directory and look here this is the executable that is running okay if you look at its properties you're going to see that it is an executable indeed okay so i don't know what language you're going to see this in but in my case it's in chinese and you see that it is an executable okay so this is what is running but if you click on it it's not going to run in this case it's going to show that some things are missing i'm going to show you how to deal with this uh, later in the course but for now know that your application is being built to be here and uh, qt creator knows to load the needed library so that we can run it for now and this is enough for us to run so if you want to run it click on this button you're going to see your application run so now that you've seen what a compiler can do which is build your source code into an executable what is a compiler what is the real process it goes through to give us the executable that we need the compiler goes through a number of steps that we describe here you start with your source code in your ide and you see that we have for example the main cpp file and in the main cpp file we may import some libraries that we're going to use we start with the source code really that is split up in many files the first step is to bundle all these files into more manageable code chunks in this case we assume that we had include statements in our main cpp file and they're going to be bundled into the same main cpp file and when we do that we still have the source code this process is called pre-processing after that we need to compile our code and turn it into assembly code that is more understandable by the computer it is more low level if you will but again assembly code is not low enough to be understandable by the computer because you might already know that computers only speak in terms of ones and zeros we have to do a step that is called assembly to turn your assembly code into object code which is really one and zeros that are understandable in computer circuits so after we have these object files we are one step away from the executable file and that is really linking taking multiple object files and bundling them into one binary file that you run and that process is called linking you don't have to waste too much time trying to understand these things but i wanted you to have an idea of what happens behind the scenes when you click on that green button and it is really pre-processing your source code doing the compilation doing the assembly and then leaking your object files to give you the binary executable file that you can double click on to open your application for others to use depending on the platform that you are targeting in your application you may use different compilers in uh, your qt projects and I'm going to show you a few compilers that you might use. You, you can use GCC, which is a free compiler for Linux platforms. You can also use MinGW, which is kind of a port of GCC to be used on Windows. So it is what we are using in this course because I'm developing this course on Windows. You can also use Microsoft Visual C++ compiler it is a good compiler if you are targeting windows you can also use clang if you are targeting apple devices like uh, mac os or ios now that you have a better idea of what a compiler does how do you configure it in qt creator that's what i want to show you you go in the tools here tools menu you click on options and you have a dialogue here if the if you are not on the build run choice here so click on it and you're going to have a number of tabs here okay so you have a general tab you have a kids tab qt versions compilers debuggers and this really tells you 
the tools you're going to need when working in Qt Creator or any C++ IDE really. You're going to need a compiler to turn your source code into an executable. You're going to need a debugger, which is going to help debug problems in your applications. We're going to have a chance to use a debugger and so how it can help you. But in this case, we want to look at this kids tab. And if you click on the first one here, I don't know which one is first for you, but it shouldn't be very different. Okay, you click on it and down here, you're going to see a number of lines of information. Okay, you see the name for this kit. And if you look down here, you see they say the compiler that you are using, the debugger that you are using, the Qt version that you are using. And from this, you might infer the real meaning of a kit. A kit is really a bundle or a combination of the tools that you're going to need to target a given platform. In this case, we are targeting a platform of desktop on Windows, and this is our kit. If you were building on Linux, you might have something different, but a kit is really a bundle of tools you use to build to target a given platform. You might have a kit that targets Windows desktop. You might have a kit that targets Android. You might have a kit that targets the Mac or any platform that Qt supports. And if you look on the compilers tab, you see that we have many compilers detected and you can use all of them. In this case, I have Microsoft Visual C++ compilers. Because I have Microsoft Visual Studio installed, you can use it, but we can also use MinGW, which is what we are using today. Okay, so this is where you configure your compilers. Your debuggers are going to be here. So Qt Creator detected GNU GDB debugger that I am using here. And this really covers what I wanted to tell you in this lecture. And the main aim was to get you to be familiar with the IDE and what it does. You use it to type your source code. You hit that green button to turn your source code into an executable. And the way that happens, it is that the compiler helps in the background to help you have the executable that you can run. You can also configure your compilers by going into tools, options, build and run, and you're going to have a lot of configurations that you're going to use in your Qt C++ GUI project. In the next lecture, we're going to write our first C++ console applications and explain a few things you're going to need as you write C++ application using Qt Creator and C++. I'll see you there.